Hey guys, good morning and welcome to the vlog. Today is a full production day working on the new album and on top of that dealing with business stuff, I have to sign a lot of contracts that have to do with the vocals that I got for this new album. And a lot of people actually asked me how I got these vocals, how much I paid for them, how you can actually get vocals, good quality without paying anything or paying as little as possible. So. This entire video will be all of that, like a guide how to get vocals, good vocals, as a music producer. So the first and easiest option is of course not using vocalists at all. I think that's like what you first have to learn for maybe the first half year or even year to not use vocals. Just focus on making good instrumentals because that's your main part as a producer. And then once you feel comfortable using the program and you know what you're doing and your music sounds like music and a full track, then start incorporating vocals. You could either send your instrumentals to rappers, they will rap on top of it, or you could get free vocals to further train from sample packs out of a remix competition. These are usually the highest quality ones and you actually get a full song and not just random snippets and sentences here and there or just straight up sample it from another song if you get the possibility or search online for a acapellas. The only downside with all of these, I mean, yes, they're high quality usually because they're actually being used on music that is being released, but the downside is it's not really legal. So you can't release them under your name and make money from it. If you try to upload it to YouTube, to SoundCloud, it will very likely get blocked. And if you try to upload it to Spotify, you won't even get there. But that step is actually quite important because you need those songs to actually get to the next more professional level of vocals. The next step, of course, would be recording yourself. For that, you need a singer, a songwriter, if you can't do it yourself. And to convince them to actually work with you, it's good to have something that you can show them and that is of good quality. The easiest would be, of course, then to ask friends, family, if they know someone that can sing. If you're in school, just ask your peers if they know someone or if they can sing. These songs will probably not be compatible with like David Guetta songs. There are way more people involved that are way more professional in doing this for years. But at least you now got vocals that you can actually use, that you can actually release and this way get maybe your first release on a label. If family and friends isn't enough, then again, like SoundCloud, YouTube, there are a lot of cover singers, a lot of people that are just waiting for a producer to work with them. If these people do not reply, don't worry, that's like normal. If you write 10, maybe one person gets back to you. But if no one wants to work with you, it's maybe a sign for your productions not being quite up there. So then just go back to your studio, work a little more with samples, remix contest parts, and make them better so that you actually have something to showcase. If you don't have anything to showcase, don't don't even bother writing people. The first thing they will ask you for is show me what, what you're able of. So you need to have finished songs before you approach people for vocals. Then for the next steps, it's really, really crucial. You've been already doing all of the other steps for a couple of years. You need to be at a point where you're a professional music producer and you actually make money with your music. Otherwise, it's really hard to get to the next level. You might have to spend a lot of money for the vocals because the next level is a professional level where the singer and songwriters get a share of whatever you make. And if your share of your songs is zero, because you don't sell them to labels, you don't release them and don't make any money, they won't be working with you. Like, I mean, why? They want to make money, they want to be successful. If you can't guarantee that to at least some extent, there is no chance they will work with you. So um, repeat all of the steps before, private contacts, random people online that are on the same level, and eventually, once you, you got a song that picks up a little and gets you some Spotify streams. And then it's really time for those next steps. There are a couple of ways to get professional David Guetta, Martin Garrix like vocals. We'll explain that once I'm up there in the studio.
feels good to be back in the studio. But yeah, let's continue with the vocals. So there are a couple of methods once you got to the level where you're a professional. You can still search online for people where you think they have a talent and work with them. This usually results in like a coin flip result. You record them, you write with them, it's either good or bad, you can use it or not use it. It's quite time intensive and almost no one in the industry of like the top, top Martin Garrix, David Guetta kind of producers is actually working this way. There is always someone in between, usually a publisher like Warner, Sony, Universal, they all got their publishers. Also Spinnin has, for example, I think they're called Music Star Publishing. They write all of those songs for those labels. They have very specialized people that do nothing else than just writing songs. Usually just the chords and the vocal melody and the lyrics, of course. And then you got like a basic demo top line. These are either made in band camps specific for an artist. So let's say David Guetta wants to, to release a new album. He might um, get some publishers involved. They will do band camps with like 15, 20, 30 young people, all in groups of four, five, six, in, in rooms and studios for weeks and weeks, and they just write songs nonstop, every day, two, three, just like the demos, just the ideas. And then all of this gets sent back to David Guetta. He picks the ones where he thinks that they have the most hit potential. And then if he could produce himself, he would produce it or just send it to someone to actually finish up those songs. Maybe sitting with them in the studio, a co-producer or just producing it yourself entirely. There are then a lot of methods to, to finish these kind of songs. Once you're up at that level, it's just like you, you don't really have the time to produce 20 songs per year if you're touring nonstop doing 300 shows. So um, a lot of people get actually help. But that ghost producer, co-producer topic is, is a whole nother thing in itself. So this is how the pros get actually their vocals. They get folders and folders of songs, unfinished demo versions, and really just pick the ones with the most potential. That's actually also how I get most of my vocals now for the album. I'd say 50% is just like selecting top lines that I like, that I think fit to my style, or that maybe push me into a new style that are just interesting, modern, high quality, and this way, the end result is already clear. Because usually as a producer, if you start producing an instrumental, finding a singer that sings on top of it is usually way harder because um, it's for them also hit or miss. They do something, it takes them time. And if you say no to whatever they wrote, they can't really use it because they did it on top of your instrumental. So the other way around for them is a lot more convenient because if you don't pick it, they can still sell it to someone else. So that's actually the standard method of doing it. If you're a big artist, these songs will be specifically made for you with whatever kind of styles you want those people to make those songs, your vision for your new album. If you're a smaller artist like me, then you just get like folders with these top lines where you can choose. And um, yeah, you can still record yourself, but again, it's very time intensive. You never know what happens. And um, sometimes if I record, I take these recorded bits if I don't use them myself and give them to someone else so that the song still is happening, just not with my name on it, someone else's name on it. And this way, everyone is happy. So again, you have to work your way up. There is no, really no way around it. No one of these publishers will give you for whatever amount of money professional vocals because they still get a royalty split. And if the song doesn't perform, if the song doesn't get any plays, any airplay, any Spotify plays, they won't make any money. So you have to kind of be at a certain level as an artist to kind of guarantee them like a basis of, of plays. If you have any questions left about this topic, just leave it down below in the comments how to get good vocals. I will try and answer all of them. For me, it's now, um, yeah, working a little bit on music working on all of these contracts, really annoying. But once I got through with it, there's nothing anymore in between me finishing the album. So thanks a lot for watching. See you tomorrow again to another episode. Um, yeah, in the life of a producer and DJ. Cheers. <laughs>